folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. It's Thanksgiving, the perfect holiday season to spend time gathering with your friends and family on a wonderful Thanksgiving Day dinner filled with roasted turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, potato salad, salads, breads, cranberry sauce, and of course, pumpkin pie. Yep. And you, and you actually have to stuff up your entire stomach just after saying grace. And <laughs> But it wouldn't be Thanksgiving without this awesome and hilarious uh, comedy classic from John Hughes called Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Yep, this is the DVD edition uh, that came out in 2009. It says those aren't pillows edition, that is. Yeah, like the famous line from the movie. Those aren't pillows. Okay. Well, anyway, they, they also have this on Blu-ray as well. Um, someday I'll probably find the Blu-ray edition. So that could be part of it. But this has an, a gorgeous um, hologram image right there. Where you see two stars, Steve Martin and John Candy, you know, picking up luggage right here. So that's really cool. And when you take it out, you have the original uh, poster art with um, Steve Martin and John Candy. Yeah, John Candy and the mustache. <laughs> yeah, laying together. Yep, it's uh, it's a perfect DVD release. Um, has this, of course. And just so you know, I did change the, the case because originally it, it came with an Eagle Box a DVD case. So I ended up buying a, uh, a perfect uh, DVD case for this so that way it can hold better. Yeah. And it has um, some great special features. You know, already on the back as shown. So that's cool. Um, I really love this movie a lot. It's definitely the perfect Thanksgiving movie to watch. And surprisingly enough, um, well, yesterday was November 25th, so this would have already celebrated its 28th anniversary for this movie. So that's cool. <laughs> perfect. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's also the perfect movie to have uh, Steve Martin and John Candy working together by sharing screen time after their last film which they didn't share screen time yeah they were just playing different characters in the Little Shop of Horrors remake from 1986 directed by Frank Oz so I thought wow I mean this is cool and not to mention um, this was also considered to be an adult comedy so that's why the film is R rated mostly because it had a lot of you know foul languages in the movie, especially the F word, which we're going to get to that scene. So yeah, it, I mean, this was also perfect. It actually did pretty well at the box office when it came out. I think it opened at third. So it earned, um, for its budget of $30 million, it actually earned uh, $49.5 million at the box office, so that that's perfect. I mean, it's a movie that you can watch over and over and over again. Just shows about what was it like if you have uh, two strangers who are already, you know, traveling all the way to um, to where they're going, you know, for Thanksgiving, so they can spend time. So that's pretty much what they're trying to do. So anyway, let, let's get to the review. It stars Steve Martin, John Candy, Lila Robbins, Michael McKean, Kevin Bacon, Dylan Baker. Olivia Burnett, yeah, both of which were in the movie Fearless Bueller's Day Off. Larry Hankin, Richard Hurd, Matthew Lawrence, yep, the, the the brother of Joy Lawrence. Edie McClure, been a lot of movies, of course. See, Bill Irwin, Ben Stein, same here. Diane Dill, Lyman Ward. And William Wyndham. It's written, produced, and directed by John Hughes. 
The movie begins when an ad executive named Neil Page, who's played by Steve Martin, is trying to return to his family for Thanksgiving in Chicago while on a business trip in New York City. But it's being delayed by an executive who cannot decide which mock-up will be used for an ad. Yeah, because he was just looking at all these ads just to see which one would work and which one would not. That sort of way. But then after their meeting ends, without a decision, Neil tries to find a taxi cab and successfully holds one after a huge race between another uh, businessman with a cameo appearance by Kevin Bacon. Suddenly, um, a traveling salesman who sells uh, shower curtain rings has advisedly left his trunk at the edge of the street, causing Neil to, to trip while racing the man for the cab. Yep, his name is Dale Griffin, who's played by John Candy. So then, um, Dale decided to eventually snatch a taxi ride that Neil had bought from an attorney. So the two had met again at the JFK airport, where they board on a plane all the way to O'Hara which unfortunately they ride it into Wichita due to a blizzard in Chicago. So what could have been a 1 hour and 45 minute flight from New York to Chicago turns into a three day ordeal. So that's that means everything's gone completely wrong. But by the time they're trying to reach Chicago, since all of the, the attempts that they try to do have failed completely by either bad luck or Neil's incompetence, they were forced to share a room together at a local hotel on the very first night. So unfortunately, that's where it becomes a big problem because you know since you know Dell does does come across as being lazy, you know, tired and, and fat. Neil actually loses his temper with Dell and, and insults him completely. But in response, Dell admits that he is regarded to Neil as a cold, cynical, and and stays uh, says that he's desperately how Neil feels, meaning that he loves himself. You know, he talks too much. He he just he feels like a lonely guy, and he's also liked by others because he's not afraid the the way that he is. Yeah, because he's actually a nice guy. He's not he's not terrible. But Neil comes down and the two men had finally fall asleep. That is until their cash is being robbed by a burglar. So then the next morning, this is where we get to see that famous scene. This is where Neil and Dell were like saying something like this. Uh, Dell, why did you kiss my ear? Why are you hoarding my hand? And he says, Where's your other hand? Between two pillows. Those aren't pillows? Ah! Oh man, that, <laughs> oh, that's such a funny moment. Anyway, the following day they attempt to reach Chicago by train. However, the locomotive had broken down. So the, they leave the passengers stranded into a Missouri field. So then they decided to reach Jefferson City where it's Dell decided to sell remaining shower curtain rings to buy uh, bus tickets. So they decided to take the, the bus all the way to St. Louis yeah, while they were singing the song the, the, to the Flintstones theme. So upon their arrival, Neil again had offered Dell over lunch in a two-part ways to explain about what, what's going on. So Neil attempts to rent a car, but he finds out that that the rental car space at the Denton's rental lot has been empty, so that means it's been taken over. But after walking through a cold in an airport terminal, Neil vents his anger at a rental agent to no available. Yeah, and she was played by Edie McClure. And and that famous scene that I just never forget because that was the one where where <laughs> where Neil actually rants at her by uh, swearing, giving her the F word. Welcome to Marathon. May I help you? Yes. How may I help you? You can start by wiping that 
fucking dumbass smile off your rosy fucking cheeks. And you can give me a fucking automobile, a fucking Dyson, a fucking Toyota, a fucking Mustang, a fucking Buick, four fucking wheels and a seat. I really don't care the way you're speaking to me. And I don't really care for the way your company left me in the middle of fucking nowhere with fucking keys to a fucking car that isn't fucking there. I really don't care to fucking walk down a fucking highway and across a fucking one way to get back here to have you smile in my fucking face. I want a fucking car right fucking now. May I see your rental agreement? I threw it away. Oh boy. Oh boy what? You're fucked. <laughs> oh god. That, that has to be the most memorable scene in the entire history of comedy. And let's face it. I love that exchange with uh, Steve Martin and Edie McClure right there. It was just perfect. Yeah, I was just trying to see if I can get the lines right. Because sometimes my memory gets fuzzy. It's not easy. <laughs> and yes, that was the main reason why this movie had an R rating. Because of the F-bomb that's been said throughout the entire scene. But, you know, there were a lot of swear words in the film, too, that made it up for it. So, yeah. I, I just never forget that, that scene. Anyway... So then, um, he attempts to hold a taxi to Chicago, but insults the dispatcher who then insults Neil. Yeah, which then Dale, Dale arrives in time to rescue Neil with his own rental car. While driving, the pair found themselves arguing again. Of course, the dispatcher actually picked up um, <laughs> his balls and, and, and helped him all the way up into the seat. So... <laughs> That's is where Neil actually talks like a, uh, like he's on helium. <laughs> okay. Anyway, but it makes the situation even worse because when Dale nearly gets them killed on the freeway after spinning the car, you know, driving into the wrong direction, and winds up scraping between two semi trailer trucks after that driver was was asking them that they're going the wrong way. Yeah, although Dell thought uh, they were drunk, but they knew that this was going to happen. Yeah, because when they actually went straight into the, the two trucks, that this is where you get to see uh, a moment where we saw uh, both of them as skeletons, and then the next scene you saw uh, <laughs> Dell as uh, as a, a devil. <laughs> And by the time they made that stop, all their luggage had flown all the way up in the air and landed onto the road. While their hands are getting stuck <laughs> from the uh, the side of the car. Yep. And they try to take their <laughs> their hands out of there. Yeah. <laughs> it actually sticks. Okay, but then... Because what happened was... Uh, they took a moment to recover... Um, by the side of the road, but Dell carelessly discarded cigarette sets the the whole rental car on fire. Yeah, and then Neil entirely goats over Dell's predicament, thinking that he switched the libel for the damage of the car. Yeah, unfortunately, because Neil actually uh, left his wallet inside the club department, which that's where it's inside. And they're talking about the, the credit cards that's being switched because they both had the Diners Club International. Yeah, a after they picked the room, um, the hotel manager accidentally switched the cards, so now they went inside their wallets. So now we know what just happened. Yeah, during the first night. So then after that, uh, Neil's credit cards have been destroyed in a car fire. So then Neil decided to sell his designer watch to pay for a motel room for himself. And successfully did. Dell of course suddenly was bloke and tends to sleep in the car which he had lost his roof in the fire. So unfortunately Neil felt very pretty for Dell and decides to bright him in inside his uh, hotel 
you know, for the night since it's really cold and freezy out there. So they all relax. I'm just eating some food, you know, drinking some airline liquor that they just purchased. And they're just laughing about the events that they happened during the past two days. Yeah, because you know how, how much of a hazard that turned out to be. So they decided to drive to Chicago the next morning, but was badly damaged. Car was impounded by the police. So they finally made it there two days late in the back of a refrigerated truck. So then they finally went to the La Salle Van Veron uh, STA train station just so Neil can finally get to his family you know, for Thanksgiving. But then Neil started to piece together by some things Dale said about his wife during the journey. And this is where we found out about what what happened to uh, to Dale and his wife. And turns out that he, he's all alone. You know, since he hasn't been, as as we found out about his conversation in the middle of the film, that he hasn't been home for years, mostly because he's spending more time, you know, selling you know shower curtains and all that. Yeah, because he's a businessman. But it just seems to me like. What's even worse about that, he hasn't seen his wife for eight years, and he just found out that she passed away. And yeah, so that's why he felt all alone. So Neil decided to help him out by actually taking his luggage and decided to go all the way to his house, where they're already preparing for Thanksgiving. Yeah, with all, all, the, fan, with all the friends and family gathering around. And this is where... We get that sad and happy any moment with um, with Neil actually introducing to Dell in front of the entire family and and they're just happy that everything's home safe and sound. They're already preparing for for a very good Thanksgiving Day meal, and then the movie ends. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles is a funny, hilarious comedy that you'll never forget because let's face it. I mean, you would definitely be in this situation, especially on Thanksgiving Day. You know, trying to get there as fast as you can, you know, so that way you won't miss it. I mean, that's exactly what the film's all about. You know, it's... I imagine being in, in your shoes of of Neil Page, you know, as, as high-strung and stubborn you are. I mean, deep down, you just want to be able to spend time with your family just trying to get there on time. Well, while you have a stranger who's a... A traveling salesman who's overly talkative, optimistic, friendly, and of course very clumsy. <laughs> kind of, um, kind of special, nice guy trying to help him out. You know, even though he's been having troubles. I mean, that's the whole point of this movie, and it shows. I, I thought, you know, Steve Martin and John Candy had good chemistry together. You know, in in some crazy situations that they're going through just to get there, it, it works. And I'm glad we had a film like this, and I, I love the cast that they followed after that. You know, between those situations, I mean, you got uh, Edie McClure, Michael McKean as a state trooper. You got, uh, of course, Kevin Bacon making a cameo appearance as a taxi racer. You got Dylan Baker and Olivia Burnett as Owen and Marty Page. You know, yeah, one is the uh, the ad executive uh, partner that he's working with him. Olivia Burnett is just the uh, the uh, stewardess, and then you got some other actors like Matthew Lawrence as uh, Neil Page's Ju Neil Page Jr. and <laughs> yeah, all the rest. I mean, it's a great cast that you'll never forget. It's also it was also the perfect comedy that uh, writer. And director John Hughes has ever came up with because let's face it he does come up with a lot of funny and witty dialogue that that he spends the entire week uh, writing it ever since he's been been doing all these uh, teen comedies and all that and he's been doing it for years although he was doing the uh, movies like uh, vacation so it, it was the perfect choice for him to do so because it definitely has the feel. It's also slapstick too. I mean, I think this was also the beginning of of slapstick comedies that John Hughes was doing. You know, later in his career, well, you know, when he wanted to do films like uh, Uncle Buck with John Candy. 
Yeah, and, and all these other, uh, not to mention Home Alone and all the rest. Yeah, it was perfect. And I, I miss John Candy, too. J John Candy was a good actor, a funny comedian, you know, from Canada. You know, ever since he started out in that TV show, SCTV. Yeah, he, he was a delight. I mean, he brings in a big smile. Yeah, because I, I always love watching all the comedies that he's done. I mean, everything from movies like Stripes, all the way to films like uh, Summer Rental, uh, Going Berserk. Yeah, this movie, of course, which I'm reviewing right now. and yeah, Spaceballs. <laughs> Uh, Uncle Buck, uh, The Great Outdoors, yeah, that was another film that came after this, yeah, with Dan Aykroyd. Oh, man, it, I, I, I really miss him. He, he's such a great actor. A totally lovable uh, character that you'll never forget. And Steve Martin was as good as always. I mean, this was the perfect choice for him to be in a film from John Hughes, and and it's also great because, you know, he he's always been a great and funny comedian ever since he's been around since the 70s and 80s. And, yeah, well, he, he's been around for a very long time. And I'm glad he's still doing what he's doing, you know, over the years. Just proves that he's a legend. Yep, and he never forget all the moments that he had. And he had a good time doing this movie. I can even tell... That this is without doubt um, one of their best roles together on screen, and you just never forget all the funny scenes that went into it. It it just works. It was the perfect choice. So. Also, the movie had a beautiful soundtrack too. Um, the score was done by um, Ira Newborn, uh, along with Brian Banks and Anthony Marwinelli. Yeah, it had some. Great tunes that, that worked so well. Um, I, I never forget all the songs, including the the I Can't Take Anything, the, which turned out to be a love theme for Plain Streams and Automobiles. I think that's the the rap song where you basically hear uh, you know Steve Martin and John Candy, you know, bickering and and yeah, just using all these sound clips that, that was in the movie. <laughs> I thought that was perfect because they've been using that. And then there's a lot of music that they put in the way of the film. And even has a cover version of Every Time You Go Away. Um, that was sung by a different uh, artist. Uh, it, it was at the end of the movie. So, yeah. It was perfect. I, I, I love that. But definitely check this movie out. Because it's... The perfect Thanksgiving movie that you'll never forget. So anyway, I give Planes, Trains, and Automobiles five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. Happy Thanksgiving, and I'll see you later. Bye.